Hello and welcome to DW Kit. In this tutorial, we're going to talk about security and you'll learn how to set up access permissions for different parts of the system so certain users can access certain forms and data. There will be multiple roles and user groups in the system we're building and it's crucial to understand how security works. In the admin panel, the security menu is located on the bottom left. Open Manage Users. Here you can create and delete users and change them by double-clicking on an item. You can change name, login, email and password, as well as domain login and localization to display the interface in a certain language. Also, you can assign groups and roles to users. A role represents a business function of a user or user group. For example, admin, lawyer, accountant, manager, etc. Each role has its own permission set. It defines what is allowed to do in the system and what's not. For example, what document types can be accessed and edited. Groups combine users and can be assigned to specific roles. This way you don't need to set multiple roles for each individual user. You can group users by any business function or geographical or structural unit within your organization. For example, administrator, San Francisco office, HR staff, etc. Now let's look at the Manage Permissions section. Here you have permission groups that can be assigned to one or more forms. For example, we have a permission group created for this document and two permissions, Edit and View. These are system permissions and DWKit checks them automatically. Let's see how we're going to assign permission sets to users. A permission set is a collection of permissions that gives users access to certain functions. Look at this diagram. A user can be linked to a role directly or via a group of users. A role is linked to permissions with one of the three available access types, permitted, forbidden, and inherited. If a permission is set as inherited, that means it's not defined whether the operation is permitted or forbidden. Because one user might be assigned with multiple roles and they may contradict each other, the following rules apply. If at least one permission link is permitted and there's no forbidden permission link with the same name, access is permitted. If at least one link is forbidden, access is denied. If all links are inherited, access is also denied. The general rule is, everything which is not permitted is forbidden. First of all, we need to add a group of permissions that we will bind to a form. Name the group Document. Then click Create a Permission to add permissions to this group and name them View and Edit respectively. We suggest that you create at least these two permissions for each form. Other permissions are custom and depend on your business system structure. Now let's add a custom permission to our group and save it. Move on to the Manage Roles interface. Open any role for editing, for example, this one. We can see that the permissions group and all the permissions assigned to it have appeared in the permissions list. All such permissions are set as inherited by default. Now you can set the access type for each permission in this group individually. Save the role when you're done. Now let's see how to bind a form to the permissions we've just created. Go to Manage Forms, select the document form we've just been working on, and click Security at the top. In the dialog window, type in the name of the permission group you want to assign to this form. For example, Document. To simplify the process, give permission groups and document types the same name. Now our document form is bound to the document permissions group. If a group of permissions is bound to a form, we will be able to check permissions from this group in the client without stating the form name. For example, you can check permissions for each form field using the properties Visible Condition, 
and read-only condition. To do that, open the Forms field settings, go to the Other tab, and write this code in the appropriate box. Note that the permission name goes inside quotes and parentheses. Here, custom permission is a permission name from the permission group that we bound to that form. It'll send a request to the server that'll check if a certain user has a certain permission to work with a certain document. If not, this field won't be displayed. It's a useful feature when you want to keep sensitive data private, but don't want to remove access to the entire form. You can also check the current user's permissions and roles at any moment and from any part of the client-side code using Global Client API. This is what the code looks like. To learn more about Global Client API, click the link in the description of this video. Now moving on to the server side. All objects of the security system that you access in the admin panel are stored in the database. Table names begin with DW Security. Programmatic access to the security system on the server side is performed via Security Provider. If necessary, you can integrate DWKit with an existing security system. To do this, create a class implementing the iSecurity Provider interface and specify the instance of your class upon configuration of the DWKit runtime. This code connects the security provider to the DWKit system. After that, you'll be able to get access to the profiles of authorized users and check permissions from any of your security systems. Let's look at the iSecurity Provider interface. Here you can see methods that let you check permissions for the current user or any other user. To find a permission, Specify the name of the permissions group or the form name and the permission name. These methods return true or false. Also, you can sign users in or out. You can create your own custom security provider and connect it to DWKit using this code. Also, you can check permissions programmatically using the check form permission method where parameters contain form and permission names. Now a few words about the login form and its customization. All interaction with the system starts with a login window. We've already logged in as admin in the admin panel overview tutorial. As soon as you enter the system, your user access rights apply automatically. You can customize the login form in the admin panel. Find it in the manage forms section and change it as you would any other form. More complex customization is also possible. You can change the part of the app which is responsible for displaying the login form. The path to the code is as follows. www.root forward slash js forward slash app forward slash login dot jsx. By default, user impersonation is included in DWKit. That means that a logged in user can perform actions as another user. See how this feature works in the vacation request sample. Pay attention to the current employee drop down list on the right. An admin can choose any user from this list to perform actions on his or her behalf. It can be used in cases when the employee is on vacation or on sick leave and cannot access the system. Now you know how to distribute permissions among all user groups and roles in your organization. We've already mentioned form field visibility and editability. In one of our next tutorials, we'll talk about front-end permissions and enabling field visibility and editability control for form fields. We all know that DWKit offers workflows and security components. In our next video, We'll show you how to use these two mechanisms together in order to display different forms to different users depending on the workflow process state. Thanks for watching. Give this video a like and subscribe to the OptimaJet channel to stay up to date with our latest tutorials.